Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at preferences in Android. Now if you go to the internet, if you go to Google and you search for um, Android Android storage options, I think we want. Here we go, storage options on the developer.android.com site. Then uh, you can find a variety of ways that you can store data in such a way that it will persist between even between runs of your application. And we've already seen um, saving a file to internal storage. And what we're going to look at in this tutorial are, is the, the shared preferences. And shared preferences allow you to, to just save a little bit of data, like an integer or a, a boolean, using a key in such a way that it will persist between runs of your application. And if you take a look at this document, you'll see that there are two methods that your activity has, get preferences, uh, and this is if you only want one preference file for your activity, that is only one set of preferences. But you can also name your preference files and have multiple different sets of preferences if you use this get shared preferences method. And I'm just gonna use get preferences here to keep things simple. So let's look at a really simple example. And um, just to get you started, I'm just going to save a simple Boolean true or false value um, in such a way that it's going to persist between runs of my application. Now this application that I've, I've created, it, um, when it starts up, it tries to load a file. Um, and there are two possibilities here. Either it could, well, there are two ways in which it could not load a file, let's say. One is if the user has never run this application before or just never clicked save so that no, no notes file exists. Um, and, and in which case failing to load it is absolutely fine. We expect it. Um, but the other possibility is that um, the user could have saved um, a file, could have saved some notes, but then um, in the process of loading it with this method here that I created, something goes wrong and we just can't load it. And I want to differentiate between those two possibilities um, by saying, if the user clicks save, I want to save a Boolean f value that says, yes, we've saved a file, and therefore we expect to be able to retrieve it next time. And if we can't, then that's an error, and we need to tell the user about it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is create a public static final string, um, and I'm going to call that file saved. And I'm going to set that equal to file saved. So all this is, is just an arbitrary string, which I'm going to use as a key to save and retrieve a simple Boolean value um, in such a way that it will persist. Um, and now if I look for the place where I, I added a listener to my save button, here, when the user clicks the save button, I want to save a Boolean value to indicate that, that a file has been saved. And uh, to do that, let's go to um, within this onclick handler somewhere. Let's go to um, this point should do it. And I'm going to call get preferences here. And that's going to get me the preference file with lots of different values that we want to persist between application runs. And I'm going to set that to the default mode private, meaning that only this application can access this preference file. And in fact, if you, um, if you call get preferences like this here in your activity, only this activity can access those preferences as far as I know. Now this returns a shared preferences um, object so I'm going to declare a shared shared preferences here. Let's call it prefs. And to edit these preferences, I need to say prefs.edit. And that returns, um, if we hover over it, a object of the type um, shared preferences.editor. So I'll declare shared shared preferences.editor. So it's an inner class of the shared preferences class. And let's call that um, editor equals. And now finally, I can say editor dot. And you talk about 
getting values. Um, so, um, well, actually, the editor doesn't get values. It just um, puts them. You talk about with your preferences. You're talking about you talk about getting values. In other words, retrieving values that you say previously and putting values, which means um, putting them to the preferences so you can save them. And the editor has methods like uh, put boolean, put float. Uh, well, you can see the list for yourself here. And I just want to save here a simple Boolean value. So I'll use the key that I declared earlier, file save, that's just a string value. And I'll set that equal to true here because this is, um, this is going to be invoked if the user clicks the save button here. Um, so we want to say, yes, we have saved a file. Um, and actually, I'm going to put that not here, but within this try clap catch block, because if an exception is thrown and we end up here, then that means we, we couldn't save the file. Now, once you've um, done a put on your editor, you have to remember to call editor dot commit, and that actually saves your um, the values that you put. Let's save that. And now we can load those preferences when the application starts up. So um, in load saved file here, um, I can I can actually say, well, actually let's get the um, get that preference here because if there isn't a file to load, then there's no point calling load saved file. So to do that, I'll say again, get preferences, get preferences here. And again, mode private. And uh, so once again, that's an object to type shared preference, prefer shared preferences. And now I can say um, prefs dot get boolean and pass in the key that I used before, this file save value that I declared up here, and give it a default value, which is going to be false, uh, to say that the um, file hasn't been saved. So this default value is overridden if um, if there isn't if there is in fact a um, preference saved for this key, and if there isn't anything saved, if you haven't done a put and a commit for this key previously, then you'll get your default value here. So let's say here boolean uh, file saved equals like that, and then we can say if file saved, then we can go ahead and load the file. Whoops, not sure what I did there. Let's go back up again. And if uh, no file has been saved, of course, then there is no need. I'll just do Control Shift F to format that. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, just uh, it's it's, um, it's pretty simple to use this, as you can see. And the key things are: you get your get the preferences, um, get an editor if you want to save a preference. Use the put methods on the editor, and don't don't forget to commit the editor to save the values in it. Um, and then when you retrieve the preferences, you just do get preferences, and then you just use the various get methods to get the values that you previously saved, and use a default um, for if you didn't save a value previously with that key, because then you'll get the default value retrieved. So that's it for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial, we're going to move on to uh, looking at how we handle error conditions um, for this application using a thing called a toast to inform the user. So join me again next time and until then, happy coding.